Hello everyone, this is Sasha with the LTRC. Thank you for joining us for which cloud options are right for you with our sponsored tabs three as part of the LTRC Industry Insights Series held every Wednesday. Our speaker today is Brian Dickey, Senior Product Management Specialist at Tab3 Software. Over the last two decades, Brian has worked in the legal software industry supporting clients and consultants across the United States with billing, accounting, and practice management software as well as designing new software features and making enhancements to better meet their needs. Brian thrives on solving, solving problems and ensuring people use the correct tools depending on the job that needs to be done. Thank you for joining us. We'll now begin the webinar. Thank you, Sasha. Hello and welcome everybody. As Sasha mentioned, my name is Brian Dickey and I am Senior Product Management Specialist for Tabs3 Software. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and speak with you all today. If you're familiar with Tabs3 software, that's great, but if not, don't worry about it, that's okay too. For over 40 years now, Tabs3 has provided industry-leading billing, practice management, and legal accounting software to law firms across the country. The core Tabs3 software suite is on-premises software, but we do offer a great cloud application called Cosmolex. During today's webinar, we'll take a look at various options for accessing software in the cloud and how the method you use affects how you use the software that you rely on each day to make your business work. Throughout this webinar, some of the examples I'll be using will reference Tabs3 software. However, the solutions presented likely apply to any product that you currently use. Especially with everything happening over the last few months, you've likely had conversations about moving to the cloud. The cloud can be both confusing and intimidating topic. It can be confusing because it means completely different things depending on who you're talking to. And it can be intimidating because there are so many different tools available and it's difficult to know whether you're selecting the right one. Moving to the cloud is an extremely appealing option though. You gain mobility and scalability, you often reduce upfront costs, and there can be less burden on IT. However, when looking to move to the cloud, it's important to ask yourself what specific problem you are looking to solve. The answer to that question is vital to understanding what solution your firm should use. If you do not determine what you are trying to accomplish, you will potentially end up adjusting your practice to conform to the software instead of using the software to enhance your practice. Simply moving to a specific cloud application may accomplish your goal of moving to the cloud, but you may not be happy about your decision if it does not truly fix what you need to accomplish. So first ask, ask yourself, what exactly are you trying to accomplish by moving to the cloud? Probably one of the most common reasons for wanting to move to the cloud is accessing your software while on the go. Perhaps you want to access important, important functions in your software, uh, like time entry, accessing your documents, or maybe viewing your calendar while you're running around town, or maybe meeting with a client outside of the office. If this is the goal, try to think about which specific actions you would need to access away from the, away from the office. Often it's only a small set of features that the software provides, not necessarily the entire program. Maybe you periodically either work from home or travel and need to access everything you normally do at the office while you're away. Perhaps your firm has multiple branch offices and what you're trying to do is looking at ways to, to connect them and share data between your offices. Or perhaps you're looking to completely eliminate your server and possibly get rid of your IT department altogether. So we're gonna take a look at five different cloud options and how they help solve the problems that I just posed in the previous slide. The first option here is what I'm calling mobile access to essential features. Depending on what products you already use, they may provide a way to access certain features while you're away from the office through a web interface or maybe a mobile app. The second option is remote access with a VPN. Perhaps the most common way to access your data remotely is through, remo is through remote access software. This often consists of using a program such as Windows Remote Desktop to connect to a computer in your office. 
um, excuse me, just one second, I had something pop up here. Um, using a program such as Windows Remote Desktop to connect to a computer in your office, allowing you to work exactly as if you were sitting there. The next is Remote Desktop Services, often referred to as RDS or Citrix. Remote Desktop Software or Citrix is similar in nature to Remote Access. However, instead of connecting to a specific computer in your office, you're connecting to what is called a virtual desktop that is, that is configured on a server in your office. We'll also discuss a hosting, a hosting solution also. A hosted solution, again, is similar to remote desktop services. However, instead of connecting to a server in your office, a hosting provider maintains the server and you connect to their servers. This is an extremely attractive option because it essentially eliminates the need to maintain your own server. And then we'll also discuss cloud applications. Cloud applications are often what people immediately think of when discussing a transition to the cloud. Cloud applications are different than traditional desktop applications in that they function in any web browser and don't require installation. They may be fully featured products or possibly utilize integration with, with various other products. So let's first talk about a solution that allows mobile access to essential features that you may need. Moving to the cloud doesn't necessarily mean switching from the software that you're already using. Many software programs offer either iPhone or Android mobile apps or possibly web-based versions of their software, which allow access to frequently used functions. So instead of sitting at your computer to add a time entry or viewing a document, you can grab your phone, tablet, or laptop and perform, infort, perform important functions that your software offers. Generally, when software programs offer this functionality, don't expect the ability to access every single feature that the program offers. They're usually designed to give you the ability to access the most commonly used functions because those are most likely things that you may do while you're uh, running around town or meeting with a client. So for example, in a time and billing program like tabs three, uh, you are way more likely to enter a time entry or possibly check a matters balance due while you're away from the office than you are to generate all of your monthly bills while you're away. These mobile apps are generally very easy to use and are designed for whatever device that you're using, whether it's a phone, tablet, or laptop. The mobile app may look a little different than what you experience when you're at the office, but generally are very simple to use. Some programs may offer mobile access for an additional charge, while others include it automatically. So for example, with Tabs3 software, we provide a feature called Tabs3 Connect. This is a mobile version of Tabs3 that provides access to important features such as time entry, documents, and your calendar. Tabs3 can act, Tabs3 Connect can be accessed on phones, tablets, or laptops wherever you have an internet connection. This is perfect when you're meeting with a client, sitting in a coffee shop, or doing anything outside of your office. So if you only need mobile access once in a while when you're running around town getting things done, we recommend finding a solution that offers mobile access to essential features. So secondly, I wanna talk about remote access. So especially over the last few months, many of us, myself included, have shifted from working in an office to working from home. For many people, it's obviously not feasible at all to bring all of their office's computer equipment home to use. And even if you could do that, that still may not give you access to everything on your firm's network that you would normally access on a day-to-day -day basis. You already have a system in place in the office and you simply need a way to access it from a different location. So what you're likely interested in here is a way to access everything you have in the office just from a different location. A solution for this is remote access. When you use remote access, you're accessing your office computer just like you would if you were sitting in front of it. Only keyboard strokes, mouse clicks, and your screen is transmitted over the internet. So performance for this is very good. The best part of this method is even though you are working remotely, you have access to everything that you had available to you in the office. 
So it can be a, a extremely seamless transition. When I personally got the word that we were transitioning to working from home, it was honestly kind of frightening. Uh, I had always worked in an office before, and never worked from home. Uh, but using this remote access method, it's really a simple transition because I was actually able to work virtually identically to how I did before. I just happened to be in a different location. I had access to every single tool that I have at the office while I'm working from home. So often when you're using this method, it's also combined with connecting to a virtual private net network or a VPN. Using a VPN will increase security. So with a VPN, all communications are sent are encrypted, which provides maximum security. Now it's really important to note that simply using a VPN is not the same thing as remote access. With this method, the VPN provides extra security while the remote access program provides the functionality and performance. It's important to use them in tandem, not one or the other. A VPN without remote access will likely have extremely poor performance. And similarly, using a remote access program without a VPN may be unsafe. So some remote access programs are completely free of charge, depending on how they're used, while others require a monthly subscription. Although these are normally pretty simple to use, most of these solutions will require at least some setup on your part, so you may need an IT person to assist you with the setup. Now, one really important thing about remote access to think about also is that as long as your computer in the office is on, you'll have complete access to the desktop from anywhere that you have an internet connection. If your computer is not on, then you will not be able to access it. So some examples of some very uh, common products that you may use to implement remote access are Windows Remote Desktop, uh, Log Me In, Splash Top, Team Viewer, and there's many others out there as well. So when I personally work from home, what I generally do is I first connect to the company's VPN, then use remote, Windows Remote Desktop to connect to my office computer. So other than distractions that may occur just from the fact that I'm working at home instead of an office, I often don't even realize that I'm working in a different location than I previously did because I have access to every single thing from the office that I did before. So if you occasionally work away from the office, one of the things that we definitely would recommend you to look into is remote access software. So as I indicated with that remote access topic though, probably one of the biggest limitations of that is that it requires the remote computer to be on at all times. If the computer at the office shuts down unexpectedly, you know, due to a Windows update or a power outage, someone at the office must restart that computer, which may not be able to happen at any time. So this is one of the reasons why remote access is not necessarily intended to be a full-time solution. If you're looking for a more permanent full-time solution, we can expand a little bit on remote access and, I'll, and now introduce the concept of virtualization. So with this method, you don't connect to an uh, individual workstation at the office, Instead, your server hosts what are called virtual desktops, which you connect to instead of your actual machine at the office. Virtual desktops behave exactly as if you're using a physical machine and which, and most people don't even realize they're using this method instead of traditional remote, remote access. Everything looks exactly the same as if you were sitting at your uh, machine at the office. Now, the, the probably the major benefit of this is that a single file server or maybe even a cluster of servers provide these desktops that every one of your company would connect to. So it doesn't matter if you have one single office location or maybe you have multiple office branches, everyone can connect to the same server with this method. Um, anyone working remotely wouldn't even need an individual workstation at the office. If you have a laptop at the office, you can connect to the server. You can take that laptop home when you're leaving the office and connect to the server in exactly the same way. So it doesn't matter where you're, you're connecting from, you'll always have the same experience of connecting to this particular virtual desktop. Uh, with this method, any application that you use, so for example, Microsoft Office programs, uh, you know, maybe your time and billing or case management programs, any of those programs you use are installed on the server 
not on your individual workstation. So essentially the only thing that your workstation actually needs is an internet connection so it can connect to this virtual desktop. This method provides great convenience and is usually a great perform has great performance at the exact same time. One important thing to, to talk about with remote desktop services also though is that this method generally does require an IT administrator that maintains this, this architecture and server upkeep. So if one of your goals is to eliminate IT, this isn't a, a solution for you because someone needs to be in charge of setting this up and maintaining it uh, for everyone that uses it. Uh, so Windows Remote Desktop Services, uh, a lot of people may commonly refer to that as terminal services. That was the, uh, the name of this, this method probably a few years ago. Uh, and Citrix are by far the most popular methods for this uh, type of uh, remote access. So RDS or Citrix are what you'd be talking about here with this particular remote access method. So if you have multiple offices, you know, maybe you work from home uh, or maybe you're on the, the road quite often and you have a server and an IT administrator, we would recommend you to use a remote desktop services or Citrix solution for access in your software. So as I mentioned with that previous solution, um, it essentially requires IT to set up the environment and maintain your server. However, one of the probably the most common things about people that want to move to the cloud uh, are looking for is they want to eliminate the cost of maintaining a server and maybe even completely getting rid, maybe, maybe just reduce your IT department. So one solution to this is to outsource this to a hosting company. This method is essentially exactly the same as the RDS method we just discussed, but instead of maintaining your own file server, it's handled by a hosting company. So instead of using your remote desktop or Citrix to connect to a server at your office, you connect to a server that's maintained by a hosting company instead. So just like the previous method, all software products you use, including Microsoft Office, uh, these are installed on the hosted server, not your local workstation, not on any local servers, because you probably don't have any local servers in this case. So the hosting company is often in charge of the installation. It's in charge of backups, software updates, maintenance, and even technical support for all of the applications that you use. So you can really focus on what you're best at, which is practicing law, not being an IT person. So also with this solution, generally what you do is you pay a monthly charge per user, and then obviously you would pay for the cost of the software uh, that you use uh, each day also. Now, one really important thing to, to note about hosted solutions is that the fine print is pretty important to pay attention to. You're essentially outsourcing your IT department to this other company. However, it's generally your responsibility to ensure compliance with software license agreements and understand how things like backups are handled. Uh, the hosted solution or hosting provider uh, can make recommendations there, but ultimately it's your responsibility to make sure that you are in compliance with everything. So some, some uh, popular hosting providers, um, uh, specific to the legal industry, there's, there's many hosting providers regardless of industry, uh, but specifically for the legal industry uh, are companies such as ProSiris, Uptime Legal, and Legal Workspace. ProSiris is the preferred cloud hosting provider for Tabs 3 software, but we have uh, firms that use uh, lots of different hosting providers also. So if you wanna work remotely, uh, or maybe you travel often, and then you either don't have or don't want to deal with IT hassle or an internal server, then we would recommend using a hosted solution. So the final method that we wanna discuss here are cloud applications. So as I kind of mentioned earlier, often this is the method that people immediately think of when they consider moving to the cloud. However, as we, all have, we have already shown, there are many alternatives to consider. Cloud applications are web-based and will generally run in any web browser. So this is great for firms that may have a mixture of Windows and Mac devices and also wanna access from phones or tablets. Since everything is run from the browser, instead of needing to install it at your office, 
All of your data is stored securely in the cloud and there's no need for you to maintain a file server. Now, usually with cloud products, you, uh, you don't have much control over when updates are installed as they're usually automatically updated. For some people, this is great, but for others, it's just something to, to be careful about also. I think we've all experienced at a time that when, you know, we use some cloud product and suddenly it slightly different, it works slightly different than the previous day. You don't have control over when things like that change with many cloud applications. Now also the number of cloud applications have drastically increased over the years. Generally, most cloud applications have limited feature sets compared to traditional on-premises applications. However, they're catching up all the time, and in some cases, even surpassing traditional desktop applications more and more all the time. When using a cloud application, one thing to pay close attention to is whether or not the features are built in or it relies on integration with other products instead of having it built into that particular product. So for example, if it's a billing system that we're talking about here, does that billing system have integrated accounting, uh, including trust accounting, which is obviously extremely vital here, or does it utilize QuickBooks? Uh, another question to ask is, does it have an integrated document management system, or will you be using a separate document management system like NetDocuments? Similar, similarly, if you're moving software like billing or case management to the cloud, then you probably also need to look at moving other products you use to the cloud also. So instead of using traditional Microsoft Office, Office products, you'll probably shift to products like Microsoft Office 365 or Google Docs instead. So most cloud applications have simple pricing structure and are available for a monthly charge per user. Usually very simple pricing, um, per user per month is how they're generally uh, priced out. So again, for example, uh, Tab3 offers a cloud-based billing and practice management program called Cosmolex. Cosmolex has integrated legal accounting, uh, including trust account management, so it doesn't require a program like QuickBooks. Uh, it's really important when you're dealing with, with um, time and billing uh, and accounting programs that you have a very good legal specific trust accounting solution. Uh, that's one thing that Cosmolex does provide for you also. So if you want a cloud product and um, one important thing with that is you're happy with its available functionality, which is really important. Uh, if you want access from any device and you don't want the hassle of an IT department, we recommend using a cloud solution or cloud application. So as you can see, there are many different ways you can access your time and billing, practice management, and accounting data in the cloud. The option that you use greatly depends on how you want to work and what problem you're trying to solve. So again, to summarize what we talked about, we discussed five different options for moving to the cloud. We talked about mobile access to essential features, remote access with VPN, RDS or Citrix, hosted solutions, and then also cloud applications. Each of these methods has its strengths, each of, each of these methods has its weaknesses, so it's really important to think about what you're truly wanting to solve prior to making a decision about which method that you want to use. So if you're interested in learning more about Tabtree software, I encourage you to contact us to take a look. Uh, tabs3.com slash ctabs3 is a way that you can uh, schedule a personal walkthrough with one of our experts. Um, I do want to take uh, time to thank you for joining myself and the rest of the Tabs3 team for uh, joining us for this industry insight webinar. Uh, visit tabs3.com for more information on our services or any of our newest initiatives. That does seem like all the time that we have for today. I'd like to one more time thank our sponsor Tabs3 and all of you for attending our webinar today as part of the LPRC Industry Insight Series. If you are curious about future webinars, please check out the ABA LTRC page or follow our Twitter at LTRC for updates. I'd also like to thank Brian one more time for presenting today. We will now conclude the webinar. Thanks everyone. Bye.